Thank you very much, Jane, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's indeed my great pleasure to, uh, to be here. Uh, and I'd like to pass special thanks to uh, Andrew and the IPA team for the invitation uh, to be here uh, at this very first National uh, Congress. Uh, and uh, also to be here and celebrate uh, your 90th uh, anniversary. Now I feel very at home here in Australia and uh, not always, that's not always the case for New Zealanders, uh, but uh, my lovely wife Helen uh, is an Australian girl born and bred in Melbourne. Uh, we were married in uh, Melbourne. We have property uh, just about 30 or 40 kilometres down the road. Uh, our three daughters are registered as Australian citizens, so it's a great pleasure for me to be uh, back here uh, in Australia. But I must admit, I do not support Australia when we play rugby. <laughs> I support you in cricket against uh, all comers. Uh, I support you uh, when you play uh, other nations such as the Lions and rugby, but when it comes to New Zealand and Australia, uh, I'm afraid even Helen now, after many years of living in New Zealand, supports uh, New Zealand. But uh, it's a great pleasure, as I say, to be here. Uh, it's a great honour to be your IFAC president. And it's only the second time in 35-year history of IFAC that the presidency has come to this part of the world. Uh, back in 1995, uh, there was a, a gentleman from Adelaide uh, who was president. Uh, and in fact, in that 35 years, there are only three presidents that have come from the Southern Hemisphere. So uh, I've uh, made myself unpopular over the years by saying, look, the name of this organisation is the International Federation of Accountants, not the NATO Federation of Accountants. So uh, it's, uh, as I say, a great honour to uh, represent this part of the world uh, as uh, your president. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the IPA, and they are a very valuable, active uh, and supportive member uh, of IFAC. And uh, we have a number of members, uh, and I will talk about that in, in a minute, but not all of them are very supportive. So I would like to thank and congratulate the IPA uh, for their support uh, of the work that we do uh, globally. Your organisation has compiled a long list of achievements and its founding 90 years ago uh, as the Institute of Factory and Cost Accountants uh, was something very special. And while the name has changed over those 90 years, uh, its commitment to excellence and professionalism hasn't. And I bring you congratulations from the global accountancy profession and wish you every great success for the next 90 years. Let me start my presentation and just very briefly overviewing IFAC, the International Federation of Accountants. Some of you may not know uh, what it is. IFAC is comprised of 173 members and associates and that's going to increase next week at our council meeting as we admit several new members. Uh, and we represent 129 countries. And that map on the screen there is the green areas uh, where we have members and associates, uh, and the grey or black areas are the areas of the world that we're working on where there is no uh, active accounting profession at the present time. We represent approximately 2.5 million accountants, and I will come back to that number shortly. And those members work in public practice, education, government service, industry, and commerce. So you can see that we are a profession that has a wide jurisdictional coverage of where people work. We are the global organisation of the accountancy profession dedicated to serving the public interest by strengthening the profession and contributing to the development of strong international economies. And I would proffer to say that there has been no greater time in the, in the history of IFAC that we need a strong international organisation representing and working with the accountancy profession. It's interesting if you look at the global financial crisis that uh, we're just starting to slowly come out of, that was the first time 
we'd seen a truly global financial crisis. Previously, they were very regional uh, throughout the world. So we, as an accountancy profession, have a really strong role to play uh, in bringing the world out of that financial crisis. And I will elaborate on that through my presentation. So the need for us to be strong and connected globally uh, has never been greater. It's interesting to look at our vision. And the vision of IFAC is that the accountancy profession be recognised as a valued leader in the development of strong and sustainable organisations, financial markets and economies. So that links in very well uh, with the topic line uh, of my uh, presentation. So when we look at analysing uh, the, the issues, the challenges that the global uh, accountancy profession face, uh, we look uh, at the operating lines uh, of IFAC. Because it won't be a surprise to you that we at IFAC, our work is around addressing the challenges and the issues faced by the global profession. And we look at our business, at, at uh, our work, under what we call operating lines. And we have four areas or four operating lines uh, that we currently concentrate on. Firstly, supporting standards development, improving the quality and the capacity of the profession, supporting the profession, and the global representation and advocacy. And I will address uh, each one of those four operating lines uh, in a little detail. So firstly, if we have a look uh, at the supporting standards development. Now, we, the profession, do not develop standards. They are undertaken by independent standard setting boards. And we have four of those. They cover audit and assurance, ethics, education, and public sector accounting standards. Now, they are independent. Uh, we, we facilitate and support them uh, as an organisation, uh, but they are independent in that they have their own governance structure, they have a public interest oversight body that uh, makes sure that the work that they do is uh, within the public interest, uh, and we uh, facilitate the nominations, the, the, the way that people get appointed to those boards. Uh, we also provide uh, their funding and their resource base. And it's interesting to note that 65% of the international budget goes directly to those independent standard setting boards. And the reason that we sort of are supporting and facilitating, and it's a key activity of IFAC, is that we strongly believe that global standards add value to the accounting profession because they are the foundation of high quality performance. We also believe that the public interest is best served by consistent adoption and implementation of high quality internationally accepted standards. Now when we look at standards, there are three distinct processes. First of all, there is the development uh, of the standards. Now that is relatively straightforward, it takes a long time, there's a due process uh, around it, uh, but if we stop there, all we would have is words on a page. The second process is the adoption, so you need an accounting body or the government to say we will adopt these international standards. And again, that's relatively easy, and if we stop there, we would have, still have just words on a page. But the hard bit is the implementation of those standards. And that's where we, individual members, and also member bodies such as IPA, that's our role, is to implement those uh, international standards. And I can tell you that that is the hard part. But I can congratulate Australia uh, on what they have done over the last uh, 10 or 20 years in terms of implementing the international standards. You are right up there with the major countries uh, of the world in terms of your success 
uh, and consistent implementation uh, of those uh, international standards. So to ensure that there is clear and transparent financial information is produced while enhancing comparability, credibility, consistency and stability, that is what those standards are all about. In the private sector, they promote confidence in the market and amongst investors. And in the public sector, they enhance management, transparency and accountability. They facilitate the comparison of financial information globally. And they attract investment, foster cross-border activity and further support economic growth. And it's essential that when we, uh, or that these independent standard setting boards undertake their work, that they have direct input from small to medium practitioners. So we, when we facilitate the appointment to these uh, standard setting boards uh, in IFAC, we make sure that they have appropriate representation from the SMP members uh, of the profession. Because if these standards are going to be properly implemented, and as I said, that's, that's where we've got to get to, it's not just the development or the uh, adoption. So if they are to be implemented, they need to be what we call scalable. So they just don't apply to the big end of town. They need to be able to be taken and applied uh, in small to medium uh, enterprises. It's important also just to draw your attention to two very important work streams that are currently being undertaken. The first one by the International uh, Audit and Assurance Standards Board, the IAASB. Uh, they are working on a work stream uh, at present dealing with audit reporting. And I don't want to go into detail about that today, uh, but it's interesting to note that uh, the uh, CEO of CPA Australia said that this was the greatest development impacting the audit profession in the last decade. And Alex Malley is right in that uh, comment. So when that new audit reporting uh, comes out, uh, it will have a significant impact uh, on the audit profession. The other important work stream, uh, and it's been controversial to date, uh, is the Ethics Standards Board and their work on uh, reporting illegal acts. The Ethics Board have been asked by the regulators of the world to look at a way where we, the accountancy profession, can be involved in reporting illegal acts uh, through the work that we undertake. Now, you will all understand the difficulty of doing that. Uh, and as I say, this is a controversial piece of work that the Ethics Board is doing, uh, but uh, their role is to find a way through that uh, and uh, to comply with that request from uh, their regulators. The next uh, major um, area uh, that I'd like to look at is improving quality and capacity. Here we focus on enhancing the quality and increasing the capacity of the accountants and the accounting profession uh, around the world. I mentioned in my opening slide that we represent 2.5 million accountants. Every time I mention that number, whenever I speak around the world, I always have the feeling that's nowhere near enough. And uh, I will talk about recruitment uh, a little later in the presentation. But if we are going to continue to serve and to meet the demands that the public place on us, two and a half million of us is nowhere near enough. So we run a, a member body compliance program uh, in which we admit new members to, to IFAC uh, and we also ensure that our existing members uh, are sort of meeting the responsibilities that they have uh, as members of IFAC. This is not like a golf club where you pay your dues and you turn up and play whenever you like. Uh, you can play badly or play well, it doesn't really matter. So this is not a golf club. This is something that you join and you meet responsibilities and you continue to play well every day 
uh, and you continue to meet the responsibilities uh, of being a member of the international uh, profession. The way that we admit members, the way that we uh, monitor the compliance of our members with, the, with their responsibilities uh, is overseen by the Public Interest Oversight Board, uh, which is an independent body that uh, overlooks the activities of the global accountancy profession. We also have a very active, what we call PAO, Professional Accountancy Organisation Development Committee. We work closely with the donor agencies, such as the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank in this region, uh, and other international organisations to help build the capacity. I refer back to that globe of the world that I showed you, and there's a very vast area of sub-Sahara Africa where there is no active accounting profession. And the research is very categoric that if countries are to achieve their economic growth targets, they need to have a well-functioning and active accountancy profession. They will not achieve those growth targets without the accountancy profession uh, being established and working properly. And it's interesting, if you have a look in this region, uh, in, in the sort of the near region here of uh, Australia, uh, we've got some examples of areas where a huge amount of development is necessary. Look at Indonesia, population 250 million. The accountancy profession there is less than 50,000 members and reducing on a daily basis. The average age of those professionals is more than 50 years old. Now, I see Indonesia as an, a country with tremendous potential for economic growth. And without the increased involvement and activity of the accountancy profession, they will not achieve their targets. Also, there are a number of smaller Pacific islands in this uh, region that need development. Samoa, Fiji, I know your professional body is doing some excellent work uh, in that regard. But it's not only developing nations. When I go to Europe, many of the very so-called sophisticated countries of Europe their accountancy profession is only made up of the audit profession. So those people that work outside in industry or commerce, the public sector, they're not members of any organised professional body. So they don't, they don't have to comply with ethical requirements, there's no framework for continuing professional development, and that's something that we are working hard uh, to address. The next line is what we call supporting the profession. And another one of our operating lines is the supporting of the profession. And as I said earlier, our profession is a, d a diverse one. We have accountants working in public practice, professional accountants in business and the public sector. And we have long supported the Professional Accountants and Business Committee of IFAC and also the Small and Medium Practitioners uh, Committee and their uh, efforts to develop resources for their constituencies, increase the profile of their constituencies uh, and also represent their interests. SMPs support the health and the prosperity of the SME sector. We heard that brilliantly exposed by the Minister uh, in his presentation. Around the world, the SMEs are the engine room of every economy. And it's exactly the same in this part of uh, the world. So you people, you SMPs, are there playing a vital role in supporting those SMEs uh, in, in what they are doing. So our SMP committee uh, of IFAC is very important. And as I said earlier, they have a strong role uh, in inputting and commenting on the work of the independent standard setting boards. Also, I'd like to draw your attention to the SMP committee section of the IFAC website and two publications in particular there. That, uh, those publications, the first one is called the Good Practice Checklist for Small Businesses. And the second one is the Guide to Practice Management for SMPs. Now they are what I would describe as our best sellers. 
But in saying that, we don't sell them. And they're available to you free as members uh, of a member body of IFAC. So you can go onto the website, look at those two documents, download them, use them in your practices. They're there, they are very popular, they are very well received throughout the world, uh, and if you haven't seen them, if you haven't looked at them, uh, can I ask you to do so? Uh, the question, uh, sorry, the checklist is a checklist for SMPs to use uh, to determine what advice a small business may need. So it's like a marketing tool for you. It's like a diagnostic tool. You can run that across your SME clients and work out those areas where they need your assistance uh, and advice. And the, uh, the guide to practice management uh, is, as the name suggests, is a very detailed guide uh, to uh, running a small to medium uh, accountancy practice. The next uh, operating line is global representation and advocacy. In our capacity as the international organisation for the accountancy profession, we act as the global voice of the profession and we speak out uh, in the public interest. IFAC has a unique and influence, influential voice and we promote the interests of our profession in doing so with care and judgment. And sometimes we will use our global voice to highlight issues and questions. And we are currently commenting on uh, the taxation debate that is happening in Europe. Uh, many of you will be aware that particularly in the UK, many of the large companies have been taken to task uh, for their tax practices, the small amount of tax that they end up paying in the UK uh, and the way that they shift their tax affairs uh, around the world. So we need to gingerly enter that debate. It's very difficult as an international organisation to say too much about that, uh, but uh, that's an example of something that uh, we will get involved uh, with. Uh, we, uh, often we will strive to leverage uh, our position and our convening power to join with like-minded stakeholders to take part in the common initiative. And we work very closely with the World Bank in the, in the development work that they do, uh, and, and in particular the development of the accounting profession. So currently we have four key themes that we are speaking out on, uh, and I will cover these off very briefly. Government transparency and accountability is the first one, enhanced organisational reporting, credibility and usability of financial reporting, and finally accountants in the civil society. Just before I look at those speaking out themes, I'd like to just come back to uh, what I mentioned earlier about recruiting the best and the brightest. When we speak of IFAC's vision as a leader in developing strong and sustainable organisations, financial markets and economies, we cannot do so without speaking about growing and developing the profession. And as I said earlier, 2.5 million, that's not enough of us. And with the added demands that the public is placing upon us, uh, that is not going to be enough to uh, meet those demands to serve the public uh, in the future. I was in China last week, and it was a great pleasure to be there. And depending on who you talk to in China, as we stand here today, they need another 300 to 500,000 accountants to meet the demands of the businesses and the public within China. I mentioned Indonesia. So, you know, we're probably half the strength that we probably should be uh, in 10 years' time. So, today, being a professional accountant means being part of a very diverse constituency, and professional accountants can be found working in many, many uh, environments. And ladies and gentlemen, this is no ordinary job that we do. We are part of a profession. We are part of something really very special. It's probably the only truly global profession that there is. 
And I know that when I speak to my colleagues in other professionals, in other professions, you know, the legal profession, engineering, they marvel at the connection, the integration that we have globally. That is not matched by any other profession. So we have a responsibility both collectively and individually to be out there selling this wonderful profession. Telling our children, telling our nieces and nephews, chatting over the back fence to our neighbours and encouraging people to get involved in this profession. And it's interesting to note that in the uh, US, in the accounting schools, at the present time, the accounting schools are full for the first time probably ever. They are absolutely full. And we have a great opportunity to grow this profession currently because if you look at banking and finance and marketing and management and IT, some of those areas that uh, graduates have been focused on over the last 10 or 15 years, they've lost some of their sex appeal. And we have an opportunity to tell graduates, people looking for a career, that this is a wonderful profession, that they're guaranteed a job for life, and they're also guaranteed very worthwhile remunerative uh, opportunities. So let me now talk, uh, turn to those four speaking out themes. First of all, government transparency and accountability. The sovereign debt crisis has illustrated that the accountancy profession clearly has a role to play in helping governments improve transparency, consistency and communications. Ladies and gentlemen, how long can we as a profession stand by and see the public of the world rioting in the streets at the uh, measures the, uh, that are being applied because the governments of the world do not know how to run their uh, financial management systems. We are blessed in this part of the world where we have government enterprises that run very strong systems uh, of financial management. They do a great job in looking after our hard-earned tax dollars and investing that for the benefit of the public. And for us as accountants, it's really hard to imagine that when you go to a country like Greece or Spain or Portugal, that they run a cash-based system of accounting. So they only record the transactions when they happen. They don't have a balance sheet, so they have no idea as to what assets they have or their value. And the worst side of that story is that they have no accurate record of their liabilities or their contingencies or commitments. And that's what went wrong in Greece in particular. They made up the numbers that they sent through to the European Commission. They delivered for years numbers that they thought the European Commission wanted to hear. And no wonder it got, uh, they got into strife. It's no wonder the public were rioting in the streets. And it is time that we as a profession stood up and said, we can help you out. And you don't need to look any further than this part of the world. And it's not, it, we, uh, it's, it's very interesting when you look at the top five countries that sort of came through the, glo the global financial crisis in the best shape, they all had adopted accrual accounting as their approach to recording uh, government uh, transactions. So we, the accounting profession, I personally, because uh, I was right amongst the implementation of accrual accounting in the government uh, in uh, New Zealand, uh, we are pushing that very hard uh, on global platforms. And we're getting some traction. We're being listened to. The G20 ministers have picked it up. I had an hour and 10 minutes uh, with the Minister of Finance in China last week. He understands, he gets it. He's encouraging us, the accountancy profession, to continue to push this uh, issue. Also, the uh, World Bank and the International Monetary Fund uh, have complemented the accounting profession on the public sector accounting standards. 
So the work that was started off was pioneered in this part of the world, in New Zealand and Australia, with introducing accrual accounting and proper systems of budgeting and accountability in the public sector is now going out globally. We've got a lot of work to do in that area, but we can be very proud that it had its genesis here in this part of the world. Enhanced organisational reporting. And again, as accountants, we know that financial reporting uh, is important. And uh, increasingly, investors and other stakeholders, including lenders, are demanding more than just financial information. And it's really interesting to look at some recent research. When I started off in this wonderful profession in 1974, if you looked at the value of an enterprise, 80% of it was represented in the tangible assets on the balance sheet. And 20% of that value uh, was not on the balance sheet. Come forward to 2010, and those numbers are reversed. Today, only 20% of the value of an enterprise, regardless of its size, is represented in the financial statements. The other 80% uh, is in the intangible uh, things like uh, IP, the quality and competency of your staff, the use of natural resources, and so on. So we as accountants, we as the providers, the preparers, the auditors, the disseminators of financial information, if we don't recognise that shift, if we don't start to report that other information, then the public that we serve, the lenders, the investors, uh, will go somewhere else. Somebody else will start to eat our lunch. The Australian firms are very much involved in integrated reporting. It's an initiative that we at IFAC have been supporting for a number of years now, uh, and it is aimed at the big end of town. But I'm going to share with you two or three comments that say that this sort of thinking is very much at the small end of town as well. It's appropriate for the SMEs. Two case studies that I came across recently, both of them out of Canada, very interesting. And uh, take a note of the names of these organisations and their websites because you'll find, as I did when you go there, very interesting what these small to medium enterprises have done under the name of sustainability. And one of the activities that the SMP committee of IFAC undertake each year is a quick poll to see what the issues are that are being faced by SMPs around the world. And over the last two uh, years, sustainability has been there as one of the growth service areas for SMPs. So these case studies will help you out. The first one was a company called Veriform, V-E-R-I-F-O-R-M. It was a metal fabrication uh, business with 50 employees, so definitely an SME. And between 2006 and 2008, Veriform invested $46,000, $46,000, not very much really, is it? in over 42 energy saving projects. And the annual cost savings was more than $90,000. So double the amount that they invested that they got in annual cost savings. And it was projected that they will receive 1.5 million in savings over a 10 year period. So really very interesting, small enterprise, focused on sustainability, focused on uh, the use of their energy and got some real cost-saving benefits from that. So uh, their website is www.veroform.ca. The second case study, also from Canada, uh, is the Rocky Mountain Flatbread Company. Interesting name, isn't it? So it's a pizza restaurant, it's a wholesale uh, business, it's mobile catering. And they were founded seven years ago by an English couple that moved to British Columbia, decided they wanted to do something uh, different. Uh, and it's interesting that both uh, the uh, founders came from a business background. One of them had an accounting qualification. They have many more branches throughout British Columbia now. And their key strategy was not just to make a profit, but to create a positive change. 
not just to make a profit, but to create a positive change. They advertise, they stand by, every one of the meals that they serve is carbon neutral. And what I find interesting in that is that the younger generation, who are probably the typical people that are uh, eating their product and pizzas, they really get this. They really understand the importance of sustainability. They really button in to carbon neutrality. And they will be the ones that will be supporting a company like this. This company is involved in going into the schools and teaching the children about the importance of sustainability, about carbon neutrality. So the kids coming out of the school system, they'll get this. And so therefore, businesses and we, the accounting profession, need to understand and work with uh, this. Their website is www.rockymountainflatbread, that's all one word, uh, at dot .ca. Have a look at those. As I say, sustainability, integrated reporting, not just the big end of, of town. Credibility and usability of financial reporting is another key activity, uh, and it's all about improving the credibility of financial reporting. Compiling, auditing, and disseminating high-quality financial information is what we do as accountants. So if we are not constantly improving that financial reporting, then we will become irrelevant to the public that we serve. Somebody else will come in and undertake that role and eat our lunch. So there needs to be a critical analysis, there needs to be an understanding of the complexity of what we call the financial reporting supply chain. It's very difficult to put together uh, the financial information. And when something goes wrong big time in a big company, uh, you could be excused for thinking the only people involved in that financial reporting supply chain are the auditors. Because they are the ones that are generally the only ones that are getting attention. But, you know, there's preparers, there's uh, governance people, there's rating agencies, there's business analysts, there's many, many people involved in getting that financial reporting out. So in the SME uh, environment, an entity's governance structure needs to take greater responsibility uh, and involvement in that financial reporting. So your SME clients need to understand the importance of the role that you do for them in bringing together that financial reporting, whether it's to the tax office, whether it's uh, uh, to uh, the banks for the lending. Uh, and as I said earlier, the banks are starting to demand not just the profit. They, the banks today understand that the value of a business is not just the profit that it earns each year, but uh, many of those non-financial uh, factors. So the accountancy profession uh, also, and I, I mentioned the vision of, uh, of IFAC, uh, was to be recognised as the value leader in the development, amongst other things, of strong economies. And uh, we achieve that through uh, robust business ethics and professional judgement, backed by high quality international standards and disciplinary rules. We act in the public interest. By promoting these global standards, IFAC contributes to economic growth and the development of capital markets, promotes government transparency, accountability, helps to solidify financial infrastructure and encourages investors both within a nation and from abroad. And it's interesting to have a look here in Australia, where investor confidence is clearly evident in the rating agency's view of this nation, with AAA sovereign debt rating agencies, uh, rating uh, categories. And there's very few nations in the world today that still maintain those AAA ratings. And I want you to never underestimate the role that the accounting profession in this country has played in achieving that. And as I said before, countries will not realise their economic growth without strong, active and disciplined accounting 
uh, professions. And I congratulate you in this country because you have had a real role to play and you'll continue to have a role to play in the economic growth uh, of this nation. So ladies and gentlemen, in closing, uh, I'd like to underline the importance of accountants in the accountancy profession uh, in uh, all of, of what we do. As I mentioned, we are probably only the only truly global profession and that we contribute to all segments of the economy, both private sector, public sector, and also the civil society. Through our robust business ethics standards and professional judgments, backed by ethical and disciplinary rules, we act within the public interest. We will continue to serve this public interest by strengthening the profession and contributing to the development of strong international economies. This in turn will increase the wonderful profile that we already have uh, of our prof profession and contribute to greater economic growth in our nations, regions uh, and the world. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you.